I'd like to introduce one of the most helpful diagrams for thinking about special relativity and about ideas of simultaneity of events, um, what that means, and how information will arrive places. So I want to start with the velocity um, versus time graphs and position versus time graphs. Um, so essentially we're going to be going back to the tumble buggy. And what you can do is you can click here and this will open up a web link. And if you go to illustration number five, uh, in fact, you may find many of these illustrations here um, and ex explorations helpful. Um, but I'm gonna choose illustration number five here. And hopefully you'll have uh, an up-to-date version of, of Java working. Um, I'm gonna choose animation one and this one's really simple. It's a person walking along the ground and as time evolves here along the time axis, uh, then we see a position evolve as well. And this is completely the tumble buggy and nothing else. Um, animation two is gonna make a swap. So time is now on the y axis and position is on the x axis. So we play this. The motion looks exactly the same, but the graph is just reversed. But you see it's still uh, linear. And not in all sections, but in many sections, I, uh, I had two problem statements for the tumble buggy. How does position depend on time and how does time depend on position? And for the most part, you really want to use time uh, along the x-axis. But for space-time diagrams, having time along the y-axis uh, tends to be a more helpful way of viewing these situations. Animation 3 makes one last change. Uh, we put velocity times time on the axis. So now it's turning our time, in a sense, into a position. Now this may seem weird because you have position on the x-axis and velocity times time, which is equal to position on the y-axis. So this simply just gives, gives us a slope of 1. But we're going to see how this is going to be um, a useful way of looking at things where um, first of all a space-time diagram takes this idea of time and says no this is actually a spatial dimension it's not any different uh, than the other spatial dimensions it's now uh, a velocity times a time to make it a spatial dimension um, what we're going to look at is is going to be of a diagram more like this uh, where you have um, two lines that are already plotted on the graph there's, and these lines are the speed of light. So nothing can move faster than the speed of light. So what you have is a line that's going to be uh, of a slope one on this graph. Uh, so the y-axis is the speed of light times time. So if an object is moving at the speed of light, a certain time later it's going to have gone a certain distance, c times t. So this line, the slope of one, shows the line that light would have as it evolves, where it would be after a certain amount of time. So in a sense, time is extending up the y-axis here, and you can determine where the object is after a certain amount of time by coming over here uh, to the x-axis. So if you have an object or a person that's not moving, the evolution of that line is simply in time there's no spatial dimension that has been gained. So there's no motion to the right or left here. Um, your, your graph simply evolves vertically on the axis to say that time is evolving. So each moment here is a different unit of time later, one second, two seconds, three seconds, for instance. Uh, but the, the position has remained the same. What we can do is reset, and now we could say, well, let's let the um, speed that the person is moving be a fraction of the speed of light. Let's have them go um, 0.2 times the speed of light. So now this person is walking along, and we see that this graph is no longer just vertical because this person is gaining position in the x direction. So time is evolving on the y-axis, and position is being gained along the x-axis. Um, 
But note that compared to the speed of light c, of course the position gained is very little. So as time evolves, you move along this vertical direction by c times t, but the position is only evolving as velocity v times t. So we reset this and now let this person move at 0.8 times the speed of light. Now we see this line is beginning to get close to matching up to the light line. Since nothing can move faster than the speed of light, that means there can be no slope that is less than one, as in there can be no slope that is along this axis here. So pulling out a diagram from the text. Um, this is a space-time diagram showing the passage of two light pulses from the center of a craft. Um, so what we have is, is here um, is, is where you are in the middle of some kind of spacecraft um, that is not moving. So it's you're just sitting stationary, so it doesn't even have to be a spacecraft. And uh, what you're going to have is two light pulses emerge from the center uh, and move out both to the left and to the right. So if the light pulses are moving at the speed of light, then you have one pulse is following this light line at the speed of light, and there's another light pulse following this line. And if your craft is an equal length long, that means pulse A and pulse B are going to reach the walls at the same time, the opposite walls. And so they will reach there, what we would say, simultaneously. Um, now, in order to know any information about that, there has to be, let's say, a mirror out there. Or maybe once those pulses are detected, information is sent back to us. Uh, the fastest that information can come back to us is the speed of light. So we might finish this picture um, as having this information being sent back. And sometime later, this information arrives. Now, this is an incredibly short amount of time when you're talking about uh, a, a small room and information being sent back and forth. It seems like it comes back to you instantaneously almost. Uh, so this can be a very uh, challenging measurement to actually pull off. Um, but this gives us a sense that on a much broader scale, this is what we have to deal with. So I want to break down the space diagram space-time diagram into its uh, individual pieces and, and go back to this um, idea of two stars going supernova and one person standing still in what their space-time diagram would look like um, and another person moving in what their space-time diagram would look like. So we start here with our x-axis in the unit of light years and then we also have the y-axis in c times t also has a unit of light years. So the person who's standing still is just this line along here, this vertical line, because um, as I, we showed before, um, they are not moving in space, they're only moving in time. Um, the person walking uh, has this particular slope over here. Um, we can notice, interestingly, that the slope of this is equal to 1 over v over c. Or when you flip that around, you get the slope is equal to the speed of light divided by uh, the velocity. So the lower the velocity is, the greater c over v becomes, which means you get a very steep slope when you move slowly. Um, the fastest speed you can go is c, which means the lowest slope you could possibly have is c over c, uh, which would be equal to 1. Okay, let's put some more information on here. Um, so it seems like it just got a bit more complicated, but... Um, all we're looking at is there's the, the blue star, let's say it goes supernova and light travels toward you at the speed of light, and then there's the green star. Uh, it goes supernova and light travels at the speed of light toward you. Uh, light also goes off in the opposite direction, but we don't care about that so much. Uh, so for the person standing still, the green light arrives at exactly the same time that the blue light alives, uh, arrives. Uh, so to the person standing still, the event seems simultaneous. To the person who's moving, it seems like as they move this direction towards the green light, the green light arrives and they see that first at this time here, and then they keep walking and eventually this the blue light line matches up with them. And this time is much further along and that they're seeing this light. So to this person it appears 
that the light has arrived later. Uh, but the thing is, in inertial reference frames, the walker doesn't necessarily know they're the one moving. Just like on Earth, we have supernova signals that arrive to us, but we don't know if we're stationary or if we're moving, or if we're moving toward a star or if we're moving away from a star. Well, what we're going to find out, um, particularly when we get to the cosmology section, is that we can tell if we're moving away from or towards stars because of uh, redshift and, and, and blue shift information. Um, so we get a little bit of extra information that way. Um, but kind of the, the basic concept remains here um, that kind of breaks down this idea of simultaneity and, and what that even means. Uh, so the other version of the space-time diagram is to uh, show the person who's walking uh, as the one that's stationary because this person may not know that they're moving so they'll just assume they're not moving and that the person standing is walking backward so if you remember the second uh, little PowerPoint movie I showed on uh, the, the previous video remember that the standard was this person that was walking left uh, and now we show these uh, lines from the stars and we see that we've had to shift things um, but that makes sense because the walker thinks this first star is closer. So both of these slopes are 1 for both light pulses, which means, um, as expected, it doesn't matter how fast the walker is going, they see light approaching them at the speed of light. So these slopes have to be 1. So the walker sees the green light arrive first, which suggests that the green star is closer, and they see the blue light arrive second, which suggests to them that the blue star is further away. Meanwhile, the person standing still gets to see this light simultaneously. Um, but again, we don't have any information about that. All we know as the walker is this information here. We may have a chance in class to look at another version of one of these space-time diagrams for a different example. Um, but then on the unit review for the relativity unit, um, I uh, assign one problem that looks at these space-time diagrams as well uh, to give you a chance to to work with those and remember with these unit reviews it's not just you have to pro try it on your own and not have any assistance you can certainly um, come and ask me questions uh, about that as as you go along to make sure that you're going down the right path with that all right so there's one last section that i want to take a look at um, which is uh, the idea of relativistic momentum and relativistic mass and, and this will be an energy and this will be in uh, a separate video.